So ladies and gentlemen, we finally get today's stream. Summer Game Fest kicks off today and Jeff Keighley was the host of today's stream. Of course, we're going to give you guys our double take here on KLP Double Take. Me and my co-host Tyrus Lester are going to go in and analyze the entire stream. So stay tuned. So we all know that this was kind of already an announcement. We kind of already knew about Street Fighter 6, guys. But I was very excited because we got already a look of Ryu, Luke, Jamie, and Chung Lee. And I'm always going to hype about that 6 logo. The logo just looks phenomenal. So I'm excited for this to come out in 2023. Of course, this was a world premiere. And we saw a familiar character a character that is one of my personal favorites and just by the scene and says america's hero is back i kind of knew that this was guile right i was i was already knowing that this was guile the next character of course you can't have street fighter without guile i was excited for this because you know you get to see well first we saw an official gameplay footage of guile of course guile has the same hairstyle but he has a beard capcom Capcom's doing something here. Capcom is really changing the game up when it comes to these different type of character development. Of course, we see right now Ryu looks different and Guile has the same kind of hairstyle. He's a little bit more, I don't know, he's a little bit more realistic because if you guys remember Street Fighter V, you know, you have those, the characters that look kind of bulgy, right? But now they're looking more realistic in this game. And that's one thing that kind of gets me excited about this the whole goatee and the beard and guile just looks super cool in this platform of course if they, they 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 capcom knows what they're doing right capcom got something going on uh, again i'm excited um this is going to be for playstation 4 xbox series x and s and playstation 5 so coming in 2023 i am hyped about street fighter 6 street fighter 6 will definitely be a pickup i think we said that in a uh, podcast KLP in the morning but I'm excited y'all moving on to the live stream of summer game fest this next game I particularly was excited Kennedy because I I, I knew these type of games before and after seeing the cutscene and seeing it different I was just kind of at first I was skeptical at first by seeing the post and seeing things and we already saw things on on twitter before we actually got time to do today's double take but i was skeptical about this gameplay but after seeing the cutscene after officially watching the stream uh this is a game that i would pick up right because it's different right you have games like the main franchise come out but this game in particular it piqued my interest of course you have of course these characters going out and you know they're in the dead space and you guys are gonna know throughout the whole summer game fest we have a lot of games that are, are, are storied around space which is crazy um i saw the memes on twitter about all the games being in space but maybe maybe that's the appropriate time for it maybe it's the time for us to get something a little bit uh more different when it comes to this of course now we have a a back screen uh uh, uh kind of behind the story so technically this game alien descent is something different right because we're, we're prone to the call of duties we're prone to the battlefields we're prone to these type of uh alien type games but this one i can tell is going to be a little bit different now you have the main character and then the boss lady i got called her the boss lady because i don't know the actual character's names in these games quite just yet but she's the main one narrating through this cutscene she's the main female lead in this uh cutscene i was excited for this uh, seeing the gameplay the action packed and of course I thought this was alien um, Alien isolation that was presented by Sega That's what I thought this game was at first 
But after seeing uh, the the actual logo Alien Descent, I was excited for this game in particular because now you have this character at the towards in the end of the cutscene. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Did the alien swallow up the, the main chief and she becomes an alien? Who knows? This game, I can tell, is a little bit gory, but not too gory, right? This is the perfect match for a game to be kind of the twist because he's sitting there with these aliens. So, is he the bad guy or is he the hero in this? We don't know. We have no idea. But, of course, Aliens uh, Dark Descent is actually the official name for the game. It looks promising, right? Different scope, you know, they have the camera above your character. It comes out in 2023. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what this game brings. Of course, they're bringing it back for the last gen and the next gen consoles as well. So, I was excited to see the trailer, to see the gameplay. It looks kind of nice. Uh, different scope and different. It's just different. So to piggyback off that T, you know, we you mentioned Gory, right? And I, I'm glad this is my turn because I really wanted to <laughs> I really wanted to dissect this game a little bit. Now everyone everyone's looking forward to the uh, Callisto uh, protocol. I okay. I've got my, my feelings about this because I know that this game is going to be a good game for the next gen consoles right we all know that you know people are into the gory uh supernatural the horrifying type video games because that kind of stuff sells right if you look at games like resident evil all the series rather uh the new series the resident evil uh village and then resident resident evil uh eight you know the resident evil resonates to uh, a lot of people a lot of fan base that are into the gory games um i have to say after watching this i, I have a squeamish type stomach right and when it comes to certain gory video games i can handle it but seeing the actual gameplay in the trailer from summer game fest today the kalisto project it seems like it could be very very interesting it's a little bit too gory for me right and I, it appeals to a lot of people a lot of people like it but after seeing the blood splatter and the sounds because i was in my office right and i had the headphones in and i could hear like the splatter of the blood in my ear i don't know i'm just not rocking with this game i think it's a bit i think it's a bit too much for me right this cutscene that you're seeing right now that that to me is a little bit too much to for me to stomach inside of a video game i definitely don't see kids playing this because i i feel like if i'm and i'm 26 right t a 26 year old gets freaked out with this kind of stuff so you can only imagine you know when this when the game comes out and kids try to play this game now we did see december 2nd right is when the game's going to come out crafting is pretty good because you know in this this next segment they talked about with, with jeff Keeley, um the developer the president of uh, the ceo of um the studio he did say that the game is still in development so that's actually a good margin if you're if you're in development and this is the month of june and you're projecting the game to come out december 2nd I'm excited for that. Of course, this is Jen uh, Glenn Schofield, the CEO of Striking Distance Studios, um, that's developed this game. Honestly, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments because honestly, I think this game is a little bit uh, too gory for me. And I'm again, I'm grown man, and I just can't really stomach these type of video games. But if you're interested into it, uh, let us know. But that's there it is, guys. The Callisto Protocol is com coming out December second. Honestly, in my opinion, is a little bit too gory for me. I can't stomach it. But there's gonna be, be a lot of people talking about this game. Oh gosh, Kennedy! I saw that that cutscene. That <laughs> that kind of got me a little bit winded. So. Moving on, guys, this next thing, me and Kennedy, we're going to tag team on because this was the next part of the press conference, Summer Game Fest, Jeff Keighley. Uh, we already know the release date of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, but now we get to see official content and they actually showed the first one of the missions from the game, which we're going to talk about, of course, uh, Johanna Ferris, the GM of Call of Duty. Um, let me tell you, that set 
we got to break down that set real quick because that looks like that looks like Call of Duty Activision and Infinity War. It seems like they spent a lot of money on that set because they have the banners and they had some sort of paint on the ground, logos everywhere. Um, that looks like it's like a, a in a uh, like an out warehouse on Long Island somewhere. So, but I can tell that that set was expensive to make just for that that shot. Um, but Call of Duty, guys, that is the next thing that's coming up for the franchise Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. A lot of people are ecstatic about this game. And let me tell you, while we're getting ready to break down the uh, cutscene here, this is the first mission uh, Operation Dark Water, US Atlanta crossed land, of course, set it in 2022, October 2. Uh, October 22nd, 2022, Kennedy. And this is the first one of the missions. I don't know if this is the first mission or not. This is one of the missions. And off the bat, this game, first of all, this game is going to be $70 for PlayStation 5, right? And we can already tell because they brought back some of the elements. They brought back some of the old people like um, Price to be, for for an example, for one character, uh, uh, Simon Ghost... Um, Ridley or Riley, uh, she Ghost is one of the characters that's from the older Call of Duty franchises. So, um, seeing this game play, it looks fluid, right? Because you have um, your character, you have your uh, the water spouts. The look at that water towards the end there. The water spooking out because it's a rainy, stormy weather. So. It's more fluid, right? And this is the next gen. This is the next wave of Call of Duty. And we get right into the gameplay. Yeah, T. So, <laughs> I, I chuckle with you here in the studio. Because I played Call of Duty for the longest time, right? This is the next Call of Duty, obviously. And seeing the gameplay at Summer Game Fest, game Fest this game just looks like it's more fluid right we played a lot of call of duties before um the one thing i am hopeful for this next wave right because this is the next gen uh title call of duty where you get to really see more performance on playstation 5 or xbox series x or s whatever console you have and it's really epic right i like how the way in the press conference they kind of go kind of a slow mission type right because some of the missions are a little bit slow some of them are a little bit fast paced this is kind of a slower type fast well slower a little bit and then towards the end it gets a little bit fast paced um i'm very interested in the, the story mode the development of it one thing i am hopeful for because t we've seen it in previous call of duty games where um some call of duty games campaign is a little bit too short right and I really do hope that this has a great story, number one, because Modern Warfare 1, the first one, the first kind of remake was fantastic. So I really want this one to be just as good and just as long as the first one. Because, again, you're looking at the Modern Warfare 2, the next game, that's going to be $70 on next-gen consoles. You can bet it's going to be $70. So I want to see games be... Uh, Call of Duty, I want this game to be the mark. I want this game to be the very best. I want to get my, my, my bank for my buck from this game, right? I don't want to spend $70 for this game and it turns out not being um, high up to expectations, right? Um, and I get it, Call of Duty, they work on each game each year and you know sometimes it's a little bit different each year especially coming out of covid you know a lot of game developments right have been pushed back have been on hold have been changed so i i do like this i, I really like how can how fast this is going now and it's kind of speeding up the momentum there's a lot of explosions uh there's a lot of uh articulation there's a lot of different um uh, elements like right here i think well we just showed the guy or your character throwing a grenade and the blood splatter on the wall things like that they're really changing it up they're changing the game up for sure so so i, I agree with you kennedy one thing i wanted to point out um and we're getting ready to see it in a minute i do like it how 
each cutscene is changing its kind of location. And I know that's kind of a generic term, but you see a lot of games that are in in campaign mode, and you, your some of your campaign modes are a little bit. Uh, a little bit linear right it's just one spot and you're going linear with it now here what you're going to see is now we're roping down or we rope down into our boat and now we're moving to another area with ease there's not so much of a, a lag there that i've seen based off the, the conference the stream today um no problem we're going to see that on the next gen console right moving from area to area no loading screens it's right there right in the action paste is right there uh now we're exchanging cutscenes, and your actor is portraying that and now we're moving on to another area that's one thing i do see a lot of good changes that happen into uh that we've seen in the conference to, uh today of at summer game fest of call of duty where we're now shifting gears a little bit one of the developers did say in the stream that they he called it a water moving mechanic i don't know if that's the official name of it but we're on a boat right we're on a boat we're shifting in the water and as the boat shifts your cover shifts right you have it to where the crates and the barrels and, and the carts and stuff move from one side of the boat to the other and now as you move as the cart moves now you have to move and find different covers so you don't get shot dead and i think this will be a great addition when it comes to the online play i'm talking uh call of duty uh war zone and and of course uh johanna ferris uh, she said about uh, warfare 2.0 so that's gonna really increase the coverage there so i, I do want to see more than just the crates and stuff moving uh let's say on the boat let's say one of the maps right and I, i'm just speculating here guys i i don't we don't know yet but let's just say we're in a desert right desert storm comes and, and desert storm kind of messes up your cover and there's it's so windy you can't see and you know things are changing the environment is changing stuff like that i do want to see as well happen within this game um and i think we're going to be able to uh get that later on maybe i don't know i'm just speculating guys we we haven't the game's not out yet so i don't know but i do want to see the momentum change in that still on the boat still having the carts move around so that way you can strategically plan your attack and to plan your blocking uh, uh plan your coverage when it comes to that um well we just saw you know the enemies next to a window and then there's water you shoot the window the water spooks out and, and blasts him with water so things like that they're really really articulating for sure kennedy so t um jeff Keeley also said here um 30 years ago when the first game came out and i was <laughs> i laughed about this because they're bringing back a 30 year old game that that to me that's quite exciting um this game here has been i, I don't know too much about this game right because honestly uh, we're i'm only 26 and you're 27 t like you know we we haven't lived that long to really see this game but maybe there are some people that have seen this game now after seeing this kind of refresh rate the new style of this upcoming game it looks beautiful it looks really really good like i say one thing we saw at summer game fest is a lot of games that are sort of indie you got a lot of indie studios but it's kind of changing right it's kind of changing the flow of things and this is the game flashback 2 it's going to be available ps5 uh, for xbox uh, one Xbox Series X, Nintendo Sw uh, Switch, and Steam coming this winter uh, of this year. Quite exciting for that as well because flashback to I, I, I we haven't even played the first one so now i gotta go and youtube the first one and watch the first gameplay of the very first one so i can really dabble into that um but that's the game that also got announced yeah. so this next game kennedy i thought this was gunslingers honestly i thought they remade a new gunslinger type game because i love the gunslinger uh sagas the gunslinger games but turns out that this is not the gunslinger game that i thought this was but it kind of reminded me of it 
This game here is another great alternative, I would say, from a first-person shooter. Uh, I do believe that this game is going to sell, right? Because this is a game where it's different. It's kind of, it reminds me of Gunslinger Meek's Bioshock, right? Because you have where you have the gun, you're slinging around like a gun like Gunslinger, but then you have mystic, uh, mystic type powers and whatever it is, you have those type of powers uh, that kind of reminds you of Bioshock, right? So it's kind of a cross combination between those two games and then you have uh, Witchfire, you have this game. It's quite interesting. Uh, it seems very fast-paced, right? So I really think that this game will also sell because it's fast-paced. You're going through uh, different areas. It does look, it does look gorgeous, right? The, the map looks gorgeous. It looks like they took uh, a lot of elements and they put a lot of work into this type of game. Um, I do believe you have to be fast-paced with this kind of game, right? Because you have enemies, you have darker enemies, you got different weapons, uh, you're shifting around this is going to be a great sell right and somebody will pick this up somebody's gonna have the courage to pick this up uh, very excited for witch fire because again it's different it's gunslinger meets uh, uh what i say bioshock you know all of that of course early access is coming soon it's from epic games and they even use unreal engine right and the unreal engine they're making their money right now so this next game, T, this next game got me excited because I had no idea what game this was, right? From Summer Game Fest, of course, Black Drake Art Games and Fallen Leaf Studios, they also use Unreal Engine in this game too. I can tell that the story was going to be fantastic when it came to this. Um, so as we're seeing the cutscene and you know you're seeing the actors and they're getting portrayed and within the cutscene the trailer this kind of remind me of death stranding just just ever so slightly and i thought this was kind of a kind of a thing for this but this game here is called fort solace or fort solace if i pronounce that right of course you have roger clark and troy baker to be the two voice actors in this video game so i was ecstatic about that first of all because i am fans of both voice actors uh, in particular troy baker because he's done a lot of fantastic work um but going through this game i can tell that this game seems like it's going to be exciting um this definitely will be a pickup of course uh julia brown makes her acting uh, her uh, actress uh work there as well very excited for that for that world premiere and of course jeff Keeley had both roger clark and troy baker on stage to talk a little bit about this game and you know he's they're back right they're back on stage they're back into the acting world this game looks beautiful it looks pleasantly appealing to the eye all the colors look great i cannot wait to dabble in this game so that way i can see um what this game is about first of all and the chemistry between the two actors right phenomenal actors i cannot wait to see the chemistry in this game when it came down to it um i think this is going to be a big buy and this is going to be a big project that everyone will be talking about Agreed, Kennedy. Agreed to see those two actors together. So this next game, and we made a note, guys. We're not going to talk about every single game that got announced here on Summer Game Fest. But we're highlighting the good ones, and we got to highlight the somewhat, I say bad, right? And I'm judging the book by its cover, guys, and I'm sorry. Um, this is based off what I saw from tonight's stream. This next game, I just, I didn't get it, right? And maybe it's just a teaser, and maybe it's just, just to get you uh, understanding that something is coming. Now, this is the game called Routine. And another space game, by the way. <laughs> we saw it on Twitter today. A lot of people tweeted about, dang, another space game is out. Um, I just didn't get this one, right? And there's going to be times where there's games I get, and there's going to be times that games that I just don't get. Um, we got a short uh, teaser, and it looks like we have our gun with a, a monitor on it. I, maybe this futuristic or old school, I don't know. But going down the stairs, thinking that we're going to shoot somebody, and turns out somebody is behind us a robot or an android or whatever it is um 
I just didn't get it. And maybe I'll get it while we get more into it. And maybe when the game comes out, we can see a little bit more about it. Um, sci-fi, very sci-fi for sure. But I'm just, I don't know. I just don't know the behind the scenes of this. But the game is called Routine. And maybe we'll pick it up. To be honest with you, T, I probably won't pick it up because I don't get it either. But the next thing, of course, we couldn't have a summer game fest without a celebrity appearance. And guess who makes a celebrity appearance? You guys already saw it. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, just naked in his gym, just flexing his muscles. I, I just, <laughs> I left. I didn't, I didn't get this part. Now, I know it's a promotional piece because he was promoting his, his drink, his energy drink promoting his uh gym which i'm curious and i'm not a stalker i'm just i'm a i'm a rock fan right T, you saw me on in the gym right he's my inspiration for me to get bulky to, to work out but he of course zoa he has to plug in his drink he probably paid for that marketing promotion to, to plug in that drink real quick um so the rock made an appearance and rock is actually one of my idols really i'm very curious to see because i know he did get a house in here right here in atlanta well not in atlanta power power springs georgia but closer to atlanta so i wonder is that is that in atlanta who knows but of course he came on there for the live stream so that way he can promote the newest movie black adam of course he is the um his character i think is called the founder on um uh, Fortnite. I had to think of the game. Um, Fortnite. So he's promoting that, and of course we saw the trailer of the Rocks, the, the Rocks Fortnite trailer, um, and he kind of plugged in his trailer for the next coming, upcoming DC movie, Black Adam. Uh, it's good to see that we finally saw, and there's a full trailer. You guys can go out there and, and watch on YouTube, right? But we finally get an idea of what Black Adam could look like, and. It's, this this was kind of smart because honestly this this goes into the realm of gaming just a little bit when it comes to the movies um i don't know it's just very interesting it's very interesting to see the rock in this light into the superhero world um i think there's going to be many black adam movies starring the rock because now you have production studios and then even his production studio seven bucks productions they're going to be in charge of the black adam right they're they're producing well they did produce the black adam so um, very interested to see the rock in the superhero realm. I think this is the rocks first superhero movie. I think, um, I quote me if I'm wrong, but I think this is his kind of first superhero type, uh, film with DC. Now I'm very interested to see, is he going to be the actor to cross over to you? Because we all know we've had people to cross over from DC over to Marvel. Honestly, and I, I like both, right? I can't say I, I can. I, OK, I can say I like Marvel just a little bit more. But DC is trying to make that comeback, whatever that is. So I think if I was the rock, though, I would say, OK, we'll do DC first. And then afterwards, we'll see if Marvel can pick him up for a villain role or superhero role in the Marvel universe sometime, maybe in the future. I, I don't know. But seeing the trailer black adam guys this movie looks incredible and i'm not just hyping it up because it's the rock okay so the rock does amazing work right there's been some movies that i'm like eh, he could have done better but then there's some movies like okay that that's a good movie right um but him playing black adam this is good this is good for the rock it's good for dwayne johnson it's good for uh scope of things i think this is also going to help dc and I know we're talking about gaming, guys. I'm sorry, but I mean, this was at Summer Game Fest. This is the mark that DC needs to help them back on track, right? And I, I see Black Adam. Black Adam's going far, guys. Shout out to my man, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He don't know me personally, but shout out to him because he's doing some dope stuff. Of course, next game, Frost Giant Studios, of course, premiered this game called Stormgates at Summer Game Fest. And after seeing the cutscene for this, um, this was quite interesting, right? This is a game that I can see gamers playing. This is from the uh, different series from from a little bit of Blizzard, but you know, Frost Giant is their subsidiary, one of their subsidiary uh, type uh, studios to come apart, to come aboard, and to really build something. Their, their cutscenes are in every game that I've seen in the summer game fest is just the cutscene's been fantastic. But 
I do want to know the story behind this one, right? This is new. This is fresh. Um, typically, and we talked about this with a lot of games before, and I think I heard you talk about it on, well, yes, you did, because I was there. I was producing, but we talked about uh, Stray, when State of Play for PlayStation. Stray being a new game, a new cat out there, no pun intended, but being the new cat out there, in the gaming industry now you have stormgate where it's kind of familiar but it's still kind of new and a lot of people see the trailer and you try you got to get votes of the newer audiences out there so this game in particular i i'm quite excited for but it's going to be hard to sell for some consumers that are not used to playing something new because a lot of us were used to playing something uh that we're familiar with right so i see this game possibly going far uh within this but it, this stormgate might be might be a little hard to sell but we'll see okay moving on guys i know this was not the next game that they announced but like t said in, in the studio as we're filming this video we, we're not going to cover every type game we're just gonna cover the the big boys um i want to give because we've been highlighting some great games right but then there are some games that i have concerns with and this next game here marvel's midnight suns it looks fantastic right but i had to go and google and youtube the actual gameplay that they have out there on media because i heard of this game before guys from 2k but I've never really saw the actual gameplay of it. I think this game is going to be hard to sell to consumers because a lot of us gamers, and I don't know, I'm just speculating guys, this might be something I just should just try and see if I like it or not. I'm not really a big fan of the card games, right? Where you, you're playing using cards as a card game to, to battle and to play the game. I like to mash buttons, right? I'm a button masher. I like to be the actual character, walk around the environment, button mash, and fight. If this was that type of game, to me, this would, this game would sell. But I get it with 2K and, you know, things are, are different, right? Because we already had... A, and I say in quotations, we already had a Marvel fighting game, right? Marvel's Avengers. We, we've had a game like that. Um, this game, cutscenes looks amazing. The storyline looks great. But you're using this. The, it's, a, it's a card game element to, to control your character. It's a card, ga card game element to go about the story and to really play this game. So, um, I don't know. This might be something I would just have to give a try and see if I might like it. The one thing I'm a little bit nervous about, T, is going out and buying games to try and I uh, end up not liking it. Because I buy my games online, by the way. So when you buy a game online, you can't really return it if you don't like it. It's, you're there. You're, you're stuck with it. So I'm very skeptical about this. This is a hard sell for me because I, I'm just not a big fan of the card game style of gameplay. I'm just the button master. I want to control the character. I want to control the narrative. I want to be that character. Where where there's you're, you're that character, but you're using the card to battle and that's it so you know it's pre-orders right now it's you know october 7th 2021 coming out for last gen and next gen again i i just don't know about this one yeah i get i i agree kennedy you know games out here when they're changing the mechanics a little little bit hard to sell but moving on to the next game that i know that's gonna sell of course hunkai star rail of course this is from of course the uh Hayo verse and you guys know Hayo studios is the mastermind behind genshi impact i play genshi impact kennedy you play genshi impact we've talked about it on podcasting we enjoy a good genshi impact type game now they're expanding their brand. Now they, they made their mark out there in media. Now they're expanding the brand, Hyoverse. They're expanding that brand into more games. And I think uh, Hankai Star Rail, this is going to be a game that must be a pickup for us. Because this looks like it has a very uh, intricate story. It looks like the me battle mechanics are good. You're out, again, you're out in space, right? But this is a space game that I, in particular, am excited about because 
I love the Genshin Impact, right? We talked about anime games on the, our podcast show. We've talked about all that, Kennedy. I am ecstatic for this one because the battle mechanic looks good. You're traveling to space. You're traveling potentially. I don't know. I'm just speculating. You're tra- you're traveling to different um, uh, universes, different worlds, different planets. So that's why I'm excited for this one. Simply because this is a game that... Um, is expanding on the role and Hyoverse, they know what they're doing, right? They know exactly what they're doing when it comes down to it. I'm excited that they're giving us more, right? Because Genji Impact been out for a while and they're doing patches, they're doing different DSPs and, and different downloadable content for it, but now they're giving us a whole completely different game, right? A whole completely different game, still the same style. Of Genshi Impact, but a totally different game uh, coming soon. So I really do hope that it comes this year, but who knows? It might come uh, later in early 2023. I don't know. And the next game they're bringing to the table, also from Hyoverse, is Zenless Zone Zero. Now, this is another type Genshi Impact kind of game, different IP though, right? Hyoverse, again, like I said, they know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to give us more because now it is the time to expand behind Genshi Impact, right? After seeing gameplay of this, I think this is more of a faster paced type game. So I do think, as you said earlier in, in the panel today, you're, you're a button masher, Kennedy. So... I honestly do think that this is going to be a button mashing type of game where you're getting to control the narrative, control your character. Um, This, seeing the characters and the development and the character style and how the way they look, they they look phenomenal. They look pretty good. Um, they, They call themselves the one code is Defense Force. So I do see that maybe that this game has different types of um groups different types of ratings different types of organizations inside the game uh different uh tier you think about uh the game i can think of uh, out of my head guys is destiny right you have a different rank your different character type where you're the uh warlock or you're the the brute or the pathfinder you're I see that in this game. I see that each character has their own different quote unquote club organization where you can pick and you can choose which character you want your character to be, whether it's the warlock or the pathfinder or the brute, you know, that's this game. So again, Audioverse, shout out to them. They're giving us some, some stuff and they're giving us some great content. I cannot wait for more so we were we're going to continue the train of of anime type uh things here t because one piece odyssey got announced and we well we finally get more gameplay or a little bit more about this game because the game already been announced we already kind of knew that this was coming and i feel bad t and let me tell you why because when world seeker came out i still haven't beaten one piece world seeker and that came out i want to say in 2020 i still haven't beaten that game and now i want this game so um i gotta play all my old games so i can beat them so i can get the next game but one piece uh odyssey it's this game looks and feels right right because uh, okay and we talked about anime games before and i'm trying to do a bet right now we got a bet right now which anime uh jump force in quotations which jump type anime game is the best if if it's dragon ball z one piece or naruto um i don't i don't have an answer for you guys quite just yet because well right now one piece is winning right because i've been playing a lot of one piece games than i have dragon ball z games lately but this game looks appealing it looks like it took a page out of the jump force type cutscenes but made it better in my opinion um that's just how i see it because if you look at one piece this gameplay or this cutscene it, it does kind of remind me of a fresher jump force type cutscene or trailer that we saw back in the day so 
Of course, you got all the gang coming back together for another epic adventure. And of course, you get to control all of these characters within an epic storyline. So I cannot wait to get my hands on this one because I feel like the gaming mechanics are going to be a little bit different when it comes down to it. Um, I still haven't watched all of the One Piece animated episodes because there's like 300 of them, 500 of them. So I haven't really got to all of them. But monkey d luffy he's coming back for another adventure and he's he's bolder he's fresher he's doing some new encounters no pun intended he's going to meet new people some of the old people are coming back you're finding the mystery of the storyline i want to know what the storyline is about i'm all i'm all for this game because now you're going it's open world by the way open world going finding things you're fighting like normal but it's fresher, right? Seeing the gameplay, and it's the gameplay content still in development. This ain't even out yet, but this looks fresh, right? It looks like how every jump game should be. I'm excited for this because, of course, uh, Bandai Namco did it. Toyo Animations is coming for the next gen of 2022, so we get to have it this year. I love it. I'm, I'm here for that one. Yay, not another space game for sure. So next the the next game that got announced and like i say right, and we're gonna keep reiterating here on the panel we're not gonna go through every game guys because there's so so much games and i don't we don't want the video to be too long but this next game that got announced is nightingale and this is a game that's different right we're here at gamers of all over the world but us gamers here at KOP entertainment we try to look for games that are a little bit different so night and game this is the pre-alpha footage by the way so they're this is the alpha stage so they're not even finished but after seeing that this game has it has difference right it has a little bit of difference character developments were toying between the the old school and new school and the future you're chopping down trees you're traveling in a great adventure you're getting hurt by hogs you know so it's kind of an old tradition meets new tradition meets a storyline meets you're like a lone survivor type you have your camp set up and you have all of these weapons and these tools and you're really trying to expand out um i think this is going to be something gamers are going to want to play because now it's different right you're 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 like the lone survivor in the woods or in the city you're battling big monsters you're meeting big monsters you're battling iconic creatures you know so that's what makes gaming gaming is is different right games that we're not prone to play so much so for me in this game i see that this game is kind of like a battlefield mixed with a far cry type of thing right um you do collect cards so i don't know if this is kind of a card based type game a little bit but you are you know going through it and it does it reminds me of battlefield and a little bit of far cry because you remember in battlefield you're having the gun and you're traveling around and you're shooting but then in far cry most far cry, far cry games you're just you're surviving right that's what I see in this game, Nightingale. Um, I do think that this game is going to go far. I think people are going to play this. I see a lot of Twitch players building their village, building their their empire, if you will, uh, to expand in this game. And I, I see this game going far. I really do. I agree with you, T. It does remind me. It's not so much of um, Battlefield, but it does remind me of Far Cry. So this next game, T. And we've been talking about this game, and we talked about it on the podcast, but this is a game I definitely will be picking up. Now, here in the studio, we've been, because we when we buy games, we, we, we review them, and we, we write about them. This is the game I'm anticipating the most, and I have to make a conscious decision, because if we remember earlier, we talked about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. That game comes out also in October, so you have two big games coming out in the same month, so... And each game is going to be $70. So maybe we'll pick up both. Maybe we'll pick up one. I know Gotham Nice is going to be the one that I pick up for my PlayStation 5 at home. Because this is a game that is highly anticipated. We're getting a little bit more. I was a little bit bummed about today's uh, conference because they... Okay, Nightwing. I get it. But they showed off so much of Nightwing. We didn't get to see Robin. We didn't get to see Red Hood. We didn't get to see Batgirl so much because 
I remember seeing Batgirl when this game first got announced. And then you had Robin and, and Red Hood when they did a... I want to say it was a stay to play two months ago, I think. And now we're getting more video of Nightwing. And I'm not a hater on Nightwing. I like, I love Nightwing, but I think they should have gave us more. Right? I, I think they should have gave us a little bit more with all the other characters because we want to see the other characters, right? I might be a Red Hood fan or I might be strictly a Robin fan. But nevertheless, this is a game that's highly anticipated from the Arkham series. Uh, a little bit of the Arkham series, but a little bit different. Um, I guess in the press conference today at Summer Game Fest, they were showing different versions of Nightwing, like the hairstyle, the outfit, the haircut, the different scope of how he could look. So he's very customizable. But I would have loved to see, seen a little bit more, right? But I guess Nightwing, he's kind of the, the realm of it. He's the prodigal quotations, the prodigal son of Bruce Wayne. That you know, And Bruce Wayne is dead in this game. So I, I get it. But I would have loved to see more. But again, strictly only for the next-gen consoles. And I am ecstatic about it. So to quote, to continue on, Kennedy, um... We did get to see Neil Druckmann. And let me tell you guys, his whole company, Naughty Dog, has been doing really well. Of course, you had, uh, you know, it's been 10 years since The Last of Us, the first one. And then it's been two years since The Last of Us Part Two. Um, they did announce here in the conference that today or tomorrow was their last day of filming The Last of Us HBO series. And they kept hinting around Twitter, and I guess I must have missed it on Twitter, Kennedy, because I, I haven't seen anything on Twitter about it being leaked. But uh, long story short, guys, we are going to be seeing a remastered version of The Last of Us. Very excited for that, because The Last of Us came out 10 years ago, the first one. And they went back and they redid everything. Not, and I, 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 I over-exaggerated, guys. But, I mean, they didn't redo the voice acting with Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. But they took the figures, the acting, and they just remade the facial expressions. Now, they took note of that, right? Because if you guys remember, we saw Uncharted 4, the, the power of Uncharted 4 for PlayStation 4. How older the characters look. We saw an upscale version for PlayStation 5. And as well as the Lost Legacy. So they're taking a page out of that book. And continuing on that train to bring more realism when it comes to these games. And they're really, they're, they're doing it, right? Naughty Dog has been in the hype of things right, lately. Because you got the remasters that's coming out. Uh, the Uncharted movie that did actually pretty well by the way um that came out and they're on the forefront from that and of course now you have the last of us series is coming out for hbo and possibly coming out next year so now that they have all these elements they're redoing it and even jeff Keeley asked neil Druckmann, hey what are you working on and you know he said hey yeah we're working on the next project we saw concept art of a of another new game so Honestly, do I think that this is The Last of Us 3? I And there's speculation because they didn't really want to give it out, right? And Neil Druckmann said, yeah, we'll come back next year and we'll talk about the project. So I honestly, my predictions, Kennedy, I think this is The Last of Us 3 or The Last of Us Part 3. That's what I think this game is about. Different characters, same kind of game, but different mechanics, same kind of storyline, Last of Us Part 3. That's what I think this is happening. I think this is game is coming out because Naughty Dog is smart, right? Naughty Dog is coming out there and they're doing their thing and they're wanting to give us a little bit more um, that they need, right? So Last of Us Part 3 is what I think this game is about. I'm nervous about The Last of Us Part 1 PlayStation 5 version that's coming out September 2nd of this year. Um, are they going to, and I, I'm pretty, and Kennedy, I know the answer to this. I know that they're going to charge us $70 for this because it's the next gen consoles. They put a lot of work in it. Um, it will be good if they didn't give us like, Hey, this remake of a game we already played for $70, but honestly, they're working close with PlayStation, PlayStation's their studio. I, I think I know 
that they're going to charge that hefty price for that. So you can expect that. But if you guys want to go out there and get the copy, um, sure, I recommend it. Yeah, I agree with you, T. Um, I do think that this game is going to be $70, buddy. Uh, you can expect that for sure because it's the next thing. Um, but I'm excited for Naughty Dog's future when it comes to these games. Like I, like you mentioned, you know, um, Neil Druckmann's working on something new, right? So I, I agree with you, T. I think this is Last of Us Part 3 that he's working on. But who knows, right? Who really 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 knows and that pretty much wraps up the summer game fest i know there's a lot of things that we didn't get to cover in today's video um but you guys can go back to youtube in general and watch the whole summer game fest because we're just getting started right t because this was just part one they got another show tomorrow all the way up into sunday so we're going to try to cover as much as we can here on the klp double take um i want to thank everyone who stay in tune this i know our video has been kind of long this time but we had to get this covered tonight um as us uh, us both being analysts we had to cover summer game fest part one day one if you will uh, please be sure to like comment and subscribe to our youtube channel uh we really do appreciate it new show new scope of things new change i am so excited and i'm very thankful um, for our followers on youtube and even on audio platforms of spotify our heard radio itunes dizzer Castbox. i'm very thankful for you guys over there as well um let me know comment leave the comments below let us know we want to hear from you guys what do you think about the summer game fest event that stream today did, did you like it did you hate it did you are you on the fence about it comment below because we do want to hear from you guys so that's going to wrap it up here from klp entertainment studios of the klp double take i've been your host kennedy lucas and tyrus lester over there in the mic thank you guys for staying tuned and we'll see you guys in the next video stay swanky